So we all know slow, hopefully. Um, what you've learned as prize over run, then became y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which later became last time as delta y divided by delta x. Delta stands for change, change in y divided by change in x. Anytime you discuss rise over run, there is only one curve that your previous professor or teacher must have graphed. What is that one curve or function? Linear. linear. Linear looks like a line. So anytime one referred to slow rise of a run, y to minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, always a line. Actually, this is why I sort of stopped. But if life is just about lines, it'd be pretty easy, but it's not. Um, we have all sorts of curves, and it would be silly for us to find the slope using just a line. Um, when you get the slope, it actually gives you information about two things. Um, if the slope of the line is really large, let's say positive and large in magnitude, what can you say about that line? Is it more vertical or less vertical? Where are sounds coming from? Corby, louder. So more vertical. More vertical. So the greater the magnitude of the slope, the line keeps on going this way. And the smaller it gets, the more flat um, the line is, more horizontal. That's one. What about the direction? In other words, the sign. If it is positive, then the line is going up, going up increasing. If it is negative, the line is going down, going down decreasing. I drew a picture at the end of class last time. Um, it's a standard picture that I use. I'm going to pick two points, just like here, x1, x2, y1, y2. And right there, I've got the same triangle similar to what I have here, the grid. Yes? So naturally, I have change in y, change in x. And if you look at that tiny piece there, let's give some numbers. Um, two, four. Those are the y values. Two, comma, <coughs> four, comma, three. If I asked you to find the slope, how would you find it? I've given you two points, that's a line, so how do we find the slope? Come again. Three minus four divided by four is minus two. Okay. So the slope is 3 minus 1 divided by 4 minus 2, 2, 2, 1. Is the slope positive? Yes. 
Yes, um, which means the line is increasing. Oh, great. Okay, that line is supposed to give us information about the curve. Is the curve increasing between two and four? Yes. Is it always increasing? Yes. Yes. Billy, how? Yes. I see what? I see what you're saying, yeah. Well, what do I say? The, the line is increasing. The line is increasing, but is the curve also increasing forever between two and four? Corbin, why do you refuse to be loud? I'm not a loud person. You're not a loud person. Right explanation. Acceptable explanation. Okay. On the interval between two and four, um, the function is not increasing forever. Um, goes up, bend down. So that line is not giving us the full picture about the curve. Do you agree? Yes. So that's a problem. What about here? Do we expect that line to have a positive slope or a negative slope? Positive. Positive. That simply means the curve is increasing. But is it just increasing between four and whatever that point might be? No. no. It's going down, then going up. So not a great idea. Um, the rate of change that we computed between two and four is called the average rate of change. I call it a rock. Think of a rock or the rock. So this is a rock stands for average rate of change. Is it useful? Sure, it is useful only under one condition, which is a function is a line. In other words, a linear function. Perfect. Is any other function useless? Um, useless in the sense it's not going to give us an accurate picture. We've got to make that better. That risk. Before I get to that picture, do we know what a secret line is? I do not. Corbin? I do not. You do not? Okay, anyone else? Secret line. Okay. So a second line is any line that touches the curve exactly at two points over an interval. So if I picked two comma four or two to four as the interval, the line is going to touch there and there. Agreed. Yes, only two points. If I go from four to infinity, the line is going to touch at two points there and there. Yes. So a secant line is one that will touch the curve exactly at two points um, on a specified interval. And it is used to find the average rate of change. Agreed? Great. I know that's useless. So what we're going to do. Um, just look up that piece. Going to draw a bunch of second lines. Uh, 
authority, can you see? Okay. Um, what am I doing? As those poor lots, what are they doing? That one, that one, that one, that one. Um, showing the average rate of change between the points. True, they are sharing the average rate of change between new points. Do we agree with Corbin? Not allowed, Corbin? Yes. Okay. Um, but there is a difference between the slope of this one and that one. Can you tell me what that is? I'll give you a hint. Are oh, both of them positive? The first dotted line here on that red line. Both positive. Okay. What is the difference between the first dotted pattern line and the red line? Louder. Are you hanging out with COVID? <laughs> Louder. The dotted line is bigger. The dotted line has bigger slope than the red line. Okay. I'm going to move to the next one. What about the next one? Big up. Big up. Big up. So it is getting bigger and bigger. Fine. Does the direction change? In other words, does it suddenly become negative, the slope of the line? No. It's consistently becoming uh, larger, but the direction doesn't change. Here's a question. As I move this dotted pattern line, what is happening to the value of x? Am I getting closer to 2 or am I getting away from 2? So each of these points, point number 1, 2, 3, 4, going in that direction. So as I move that line, am I getting closer to 2 on the x-axis? Or am I going far away from two on the exact James? Closer. <laughs> James thinks closer. Is he right? Yes. So I can't see it. First X. Second X. Third. Fourth. What is happening to the X values? You're getting closer and closer to two. Okay, this concept of getting closer and closer has a name. Approaching very good. Under what concept? Starts with the letter L. Limits. Limits, James. Limits. So, can I say that as X approaches to... Yes, keep that in mind. X is approaching to... Now that you've moved away from baby steps to calculus, albeit elementary, um, I have a function y equals f of x is a function. Do we agree? Okay. So y equals f of x. I'm going to rewrite that formula. Okay. Numerator in terms of f of x. How do you think that will change? I want to write it in terms of f of x, but I have y2. So what should the first term be? How do we get y2 if we have x2? Let's start there. Yes. How do I get that number? What do you do? You plug in the slope. If you have close, very close. If you have x2, how do you get that y value given the function? Give us a hint. Doug, 
it in the operator. It's not the formula. Yeah, no, plug it in the function. Right? So if I plug in x2, I'm going to get y2. If I plug in x1, I'm going to get y1. So I'm going to rewrite the numerator as f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. Good. You see where I'm going with this? Things are slowly developing. Um, I don't want this new x2, rather, I'm just going to use x1. Um, I can express x2 in terms of x1. Do you agree? So I'm starting at 2, and I moved over to 4. So how many steps did I take from x1 to x2? 2. Very good. The weird rule of chains. Two steps. So instead of using x2 and x1, I'm simply going to rewrite Did I do anything wrong? Where h is the number of steps that you took from x2 to get to x1. Yes, no, maybe. Good. Okay. What happens to the denominator? Easy question. What happens to the denominator? What does it reduce to? H. H, very good. So f of x1 plus h minus f of x1 divided by h. Good. We are still dealing with an average rate of change. Do you agree? Have I applied a limit yet? Yes or no? It's there. Do you see a limit? Did I write L I M? Did I write X approaches something? No. I did not take a limit yet. So we are still dealing with the average rate of change. Good. And the dotted lines, the reason that I drew it this way is to demonstrate that it is getting closer and closer and closer in that direction. X is approaching two, but so far. Okay. Um, started at two, ended up at four, and now you took two steps. Do you agree? So, from four, you are getting closer and closer to two. What is happening to the value of h? h is the number of steps you take. Do you follow? Two, four, I took two steps. Now I start moving slowly from four, approaching two. My question to you is the value of h getting bigger or smaller? Make up your mind. Is it bigger or smaller? Is it common? Bigger. Bigger. Why bigger? Because the two those lines there, mm -hmm. which is well, do we agree with Corbin? You do, Kate. Why? H is going to get bigger, starting from here, getting closer to two. Why? Because you start with zero steps and you get two steps. Mm -hmm. So, and you're going back. The amount of steps get bigger. 
So we go with humility. We start it with zero steps, in other words, you are a chit. Good. First, you go this way, you took two steps. Yes. My question is. Observe that picture closely. That distance is H. Good. What is happening to H, the blue line? Do you want to change your mind? Oh, you hate it. <laughs> now, Caden, okay, what do you think? What is happening to H? Is it getting bigger or smaller? It's uh, getting smaller. It is getting smaller. Two steps becomes something else, but smaller, down to for sure, smaller, smaller. Eventually, as you get closer and closer to two, back where you started, the value of H will become zero. zero. So eventually, H is going to become zero. I'm no artist, but I'll just draw a tiny little arrow. That's the best I could do. Awful, but you get the point, right? So the distance keeps on reducing, it becomes zero. Um, back here. The slope that I found here has a name. It is called difference quotient. If you like Dairy Queen, you would like difference quotient. DQ. DQ is still an average rate of change, but when I do limit, H is approaching zero. <laughs> I'm getting closer and closer and closer to the point X1. But we started with an average rate of change. Slowly, it is moving closer to X1, but it is still an average rate of change. Do you agree? First, average rate of change, second, third, fourth, fifth. But as it comes to that point, if I have to draw a purple line like I drew, again, okay, I'm no artist, but I'm going to try. That line is probably going to be last way. Do you agree? Yes. Over here, second line, slowly moving. It's coming this way and right there. Okay. That's the purpose of that. And as you move that line from here to there, it touched or it passed through two points. But as I drew the lines and I got to that point, I'm no artist, but theoretically speaking, it will touch exactly at one point. Good. No longer two points. So that line that touches a curve at exactly one point is called a dominant but it can't be called four. A becomes a A line that touches the curve exactly at one point. Very good. It is a tangent line. Limit which approaches zero of average rate of change. 
which is simply the slope of a tangent line. With me. Will be equal to I rock, not Iraq. I rock. Apple has nothing to do with this. This is the only I thing that I like. I hate Apple. What does I stand for? Uh, stand for stands for um, instantaneous rate of change. Good. Um, so, sorry, I made a mistake. The slope of a secret line. My brain's going ahead. A rock is the slope of a secret line. Right. And this is the slope of a tangent line. A tangent line is something that catches the curve exactly at one point. Good. Good point so far. So, in other words, a rock comes from a basic rise of a run that you learned from years, years, and years ago, and you are applying uh, this concept instead of having x2 x1, you are rewriting x2 in terms of x1 by looking at the number of steps you take from x1. If you reduce the number of steps, you're getting closer and closer to x1. And what was, say, two hours long from <coughs> 4 to 2, as you got closer, became an instant. Do you agree? If you just imagine two to four distance is two, something in time is two hours long. But if you got closer, it's no longer two hours long, it becomes an instant. Yes? Hence the name instantaneous rate of change. But um, nothing but the slope of a time to fly. Same thing. Now erase this. Do we all agree that the slope of a secant line did a poor job in terms of giving us the behavior of that function? It did an awful job. It told us that the function is increasing on every single interval, but that is not the case. I'll draw the same function again. I'm not artist, but I will try. Assume that is a tangent line, touching a point exactly at Sorry, touching the curve exactly at one point. Another tangent line touching the curve exactly at one point. Touching, yes. 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 Let's make you see where I'm going. Okay, I'll just keep on going there. Um, if I pick that one point and found the instantaneous rate of change for that single line, is that going to be positive or negative? Sorry, the uh, slope, the instantaneous rate of change. So will it be positive or negative? positive. So can I conclude that the curve that is in red is increasing at that point? Yes. 
valid statement. Okay, I'm going to move over to the next point. Is the slope of the tangent line, in other words, instantaneous rate of change at that point, whether it's be positive or negative? Positive. So can I conclude that the function is increasing at that point? Good. Okay. If I picked that point right there, the purple line, which is the tangent line, touches the curve, which is in red, exactly at one point. Um, what is the slope of that tangent line? Positive or negative? Negative. negative. Can I say that the function is decreasing at that point? Yes. Okay. How about here? Function is decreasing at that point? Yes. Okay. So I've got an average rate of change, and then I've got a whole bunch of instantaneous rates of change, which is doing a good job at explaining the curve. If say it touches at exactly one point, but if you expanded that line, it would hit the bottom. Where it curves back to so, for that. Hold the thought, we'll get back to that. Um, I follow your question, but just give me a second. Um, the instantaneous rate of change, as I move from here to there, is it giving us a good picture about the curve? Yes or no? Yes. Is it doing a better job than average rate of change? Yes. Absolutely. No, to your question. But you are asking, well, if I drew this line, will it not touch somewhere down there? Yes? It's a very valid question, but we are not going to stretch that line over the entire uh, domain of the function. Are you planning on taking calculus? If you take calculus, there is a proof for this. You don't look at a function um, at a big or over a big interval. It has to be the correct word. It's infinitesimally small interval. No one cares as to what happens on that interval because it's no longer an instantaneous rate of change. Do you agree? Theoretically speaking, when I refer to this line, in my mind, that line exists on a tiny interval, infinitesimally small. I don't care about anything else. So when I draw a curve using a calculator, you will see that the line keeps on going. But I don't care about other points. I care about one point, one point only. Good? Okay. Since he brought it up, the calculator. So go ahead and plug in y equals x squared, and you all know what that function is. Hopefully, what is y equals x squared? That's a parameter. And let's set the window um, minus 10 to 10 and y as well. I will teach you later as to why you will get the line 2x. But the instantaneous rate of change, you can find it easily um, a process. I'll give its name in a second. Um, and that is what I'm going to get. Good. This is what Kate was referring to. Well, this line goes all over the place. Um, so how does it touch the function exactly at what point? 
a great shout. Is it touching at one point right over there? Yes. Yes, no, maybe. Okay. Um, if I plug in x is equal to 2 in y plus 2x, what would y be? Easy question. Okay. X is equal to 2 in y plus 2x. 4. So 2 right here, 4. Agree? That's one single point. So the line right there has a slope of 4. Good? Now, if I go to the other side, the function that you would have uh, would not be 2x, rather it would be multiple 2x. So over here, um, you can either put the direction or simply have it as 2x in 2x. If you plug in negative 2, what will you get? Negative 2. Negative 4. So negative 2, that's negative 4. If you drew a line, theoretically, it is going to touch that curve exactly at one point with a negative slope. Okay? So over here, the slope is negative. Over there, the slope is positive. So on the right-hand side, I am going to say the function is increasing at x is equal to 2. Do you agree? Okay. On the left-hand side, I am going to conclude the function is decreasing at x is equal to negative 2. Do you agree? Yes? All of the other bits over here, um, that part, that part doesn't matter to me at all. All that matters is that tiny little interval right there. So I'm going to ignore everything else. Um, so back to window. Instead of going from negative 10 to 10, I want to see what happens exactly at 2. So 1.9 to 2.01. Let's do 2.1. 3. Okay, so the first one that was drawn um, is the curve. The other one is the line. Good. And that line, uh, y equals 2x, touches the curve at that point right there. Good. Is it positive or negative? Um, if you have fancy calculators, you have two different colors. You will see. Uh, what I'm referring to. So that is the curve. I zoomed in significantly, and that one is the line. I'm going to ignore every other bit to the right and to the left. I'm going to focus on that tiny little part. At that point, is the slope positive or negative? At that instant, positive. So can I conclude that? The function is increasing. Yes. yes. So with, that is a reason why we call it instantaneous. So when you find the instantaneous rate of change, it has to be on an infinitesimally small interval. Okay? If you Google calculus, infinitesimal, pretty much it will take you to a lot of theory as to what infinitesimal means. Did that answer your question? So it has to be on a very small uh, interval because if it is not an extremely small interval, it is no longer an instant. Good? Okay. Now, what is this fancy word um, that I kept 
of the sacred text. Lord's on. Let anyone else find that some more? I guess I'll let that start. Um, the instantaneous rate of change is nothing but a derivative of a function. Okay. Um, We will stop there.